What's the story, Morning Glory? What is the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 15, Episode 6. So this episode starts off with a series of flashbacks showing us how the friendship or the relationship between Marlo and Candy has developed over the years. And it's funny to see Candy in her confessionals singing Marlo's praises, talking about how nice and sweet and lovable Marlo is, which I've never felt that way about Marlo. Marlo, ever since she first came on the show, I've never felt that Marlo was sweet or kind or really all that lovable. Marlo is Marlo, okay? She's not the devil incarnate, but she's not like, you know, warm and fuzzy and just wants to get along with everybody. Because when Marlo gets mad or if, if Marlo is having beef with you, uh, she's, ap she's the most cutthroat of them all but anyways according to candy back in the day she thought marlo was really sweet and kind and wonderful and then they also show us some unseen footage from 2020 where marlo actually did go to candy's house and sat down and talked to candy about her nephew and to me i felt like candy responded appropriately she gave her condolences she had a look of concern on her face she listened to marlo uh, but marlo still felt like candy didn't do enough for her nephew and i'm thinking what more did you want candy to do did you want her to pay for the funeral did you want her to give money to the family like what else more did you want candy to do moving on from there so marlo is out with her manager and friends ty and justin and she is talking about how candy picks and chooses what will be talked about in a particular scene i guess and now uh, she was referring to when drew had brought up the incident with candy's cousin being shot at blaze or or OLG, whichever restaurant it was, how when Drew brought that up, Candy had a look on her face like, you know, we can't talk about that right now. So uh, Marlo had a problem with that. But Marlo, you should understand that there's probably some type of legal action going on behind the scenes. And Candy is not able to talk about that. I'm pretty sure if Candy could, she would to make sure that her business looked good. Like you say, you know, everything about Candy has to be clean and pristine. So I'm pretty sure Candy would have wanted to talk about it, but she couldn't because there's probably, you know, legal stuff happening in the background. So Marlo, I don't know why you don't understand that. It wasn't her trying to control the scene. It was her having a legal up duty to not talk about it. So, um, she said she talks about how candy cannot use the show just as an advertising platform for her businesses well um candy does reveal a lot about her life okay she does talk about her personal life like the issues with um her daughter riley's father the issues that she has with her mother and her husband uh, she does talk about her her actual life on this show. It's not just her looking perfect and pristine and unaffected and just trying to promote her businesses. So we move on from there. We have Sonia. So Sonia's at home with her mom and her sister, right? Sonia's talking about, she's ta asking her sister, well, what do you think about Ross not wanting y'all to live here no anymore? And once again, she's like putting her husband in a bad light. I don't know why she's doing this. And so the sister's like, well, I was actually shocked that he wanted us to move out. And so then Sonia talks about how, you know, she has really benefited from her family living with her because they watch her son whenever she has to travel. So for her, it's like an advantage to have her, her family there. So she tells her sister, you know what, I'll talk to Ross about it. And her sister's like, you know what, we were going to be moving out anyway. And so I don't know what's going on with this family. Like, I'm not understanding why people are so confused because... When they first moved in, what was the understanding that this was going to be temporary or this was going to be long term? And doesn't the sister and her husband feel like they're probably overstaying their welcome? Or do they think because they watch Sonia's son, then they kind of can stay there for however long they want. It's like, you know what? You need us more than we need you. So we can be here however long we want to be here because we're doing you a favor by watching your kid whenever you have to travel. But Sonia, you're an Olympic champion. You're a gold medalist several times over. Ross, I'm assuming is successful in his business. Plus you have this housewife's check. Why can't you get a babysitter or a living nanny or, or something? I don't understand why you have to have... How many members of your family all living with you under the guise of whether well, helping me watch my son when I have to travel? Like, I don't understand that at all. And doesn't the family feel like they're kind of like cramping on 
Sonya and Ross's, you know, uh, cramping on their lifestyle and kind of in being in the way and overstepping their boundaries. And doesn't Sonya feel like I would rather my husband be happy than my sister be comfortable? Like, I don't understand what's going on here. So she says she's going to talk to Roz, but the sister was like, you know what? We're going to be moving on anyway, so don't bother. Moving on from there, we have Kenya. She's meeting up with her friend, Akila. Uh, Kenya wants to open up her own hair salon. And so she's talking to Akila about her history with Marlo and, you know, all the stuff that her and Marlo have been through, the things that have been said between them, the things that have been done between them. And Akila is just like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe... Like, oh my God, what? Akila, you're Kenya. Supposedly Kenya is one of her good friends. You've never watched the show. Kenya has never had a conversation with you about what goes on in the show. Why does Akila have to act so surprised? Um, you're like good friends with a housewife and you've never watched the show that she's on. So you, all of this is brand new to you because Akila was acting like all of this stuff that Kenya was telling her was completely brand new to her. So I was confused. Moving on from there, we have Drew. So she's telling her husband about the Marlowe incident. And once again, she talks about how people from the South side of Chicago do not mention the word shooting. And I don't know if y'all caught it, but I know I did. Ralph kind of had that look. He was kind of like, what? But he tried to hide it. He was trying to hide it, right? But I caught it. He was kind of like, hmm? Yeah, exactly. Because Drew, you sound stupid. You sound absolutely stupid to say that the people from the south side of Chicago do not say the word shoot. What are you talking? Drew, you are a very pretty, talented young lady. Why can't you rely on that to get you forward in life instead of relying on lies. Now I understand she probably felt like Marlo had a point when Marlo said to her, why did you use the word incident instead of using the word shooting? Why didn't you call it what it was? And maybe Drew felt like, well, you know what? Marlo has a point. What was the reason for me to try to sugarcoat it and say incident instead of shooting? Then just admit that it's okay. We've all made mistakes, girl. Just say, you know what? You're right. I should have said shooting. You're right. I don't know why I use the word incident because it didn't really matter. It didn't even matter. <laughs> but anyways, instead of just admitting to that, she'd rather lie and say, well, I didn't use the word shooting because we don't say that from, we don't say that, um, from where I'm from the South side of Chicago. What girl go sit down. Anyways, candy. She's at home. Todd is working on writing a movie. And one thing I've noticed is that for the past couple of seasons or so, Bravo is making sure that we see Todd working. And I don't know if Candy told, I mean, uh, if Candy told Andy Cohen or told the executives or what to be like, hey, anytime that I'm shooting a scene with my husband, make sure that he appears to be working. You know, because people talk about how Candy's husband, Todd, is relying on her money and he's using her for her money or he doesn't pull in the same amount of dough as she does. I don't know. But I realize, I'm realizing that every time we see Todd, He's busy at work, busy at work, busy at work, trying to prove to the world that, look, I earn my, my own keep. I make my own money. I'm not relying on my wife's wealth for anything. So she calls Kenya and they talk about Courtney's event because Courtney is going to be hosting some type of an escape room event and she's invited all the ladies. And so they're talking about that. And Kenya tells Candy about what Marlo had said about Candy not doing enough for her nephew. And Candy now is pissed. Now she's triggered. So Candy was like, I never heard the version that the person that killed Marlo's nephew um, had worked for her too. She was like, that's a different version because I've never heard of that. She knew that obviously the, the nephew worked for her. The nephew was murdered. But when the nephew was murdered, he was no longer working for Candy. So like, I don't even know how to, because I know that Candy is generous. Now, because the nephew used to work for her, did Candy have an obligation or a responsibility to offer some type of financial help to the family because she's got it like that? And plus the nephew used to work for her or was it okay for her just to give her condolences to Marlo and just move on? I don't know. From there, we have the, we finally are at the escape room event. So... I don't even know where to start with this. 
Candy walks in and Candy's bothered, right? Because of the stuff that she heard from Kenya about what Marlo has been saying. So she tells Marlo right away, cause you know, Candy can't keep nothing in. And when something's bothering her, you know, she has to deal with it head on. So she tells Marlo, Hey, you know, what was, what's the situation with your nephew? And so Marlo says, you know what? Let's go talk. You, me and Drew of all people. Let's go talk. I don't know why she had to bring in drew so she starts off by saying you know that drew had used the word incident instead of using the word shooting and so she confronted drew about that and she told drew how you know people are always tiptoeing around you and people are so protective of you but when it comes to me and my reputation y'all drag me through the mud y'all talk about how much of a whore i am how i'm slashing people's faces you know when it comes to me ain't nobody sugarcoating anything but when it comes to you it's always oh we have to be careful about with candy we have to be careful with candy and I don't understand the double standard and so candy for whatever reason was more focused on the fact that the nephew being killed had nothing to do with her or her businesses and Marlo was trying to explain to candy my issue is the reason why the whole nephew thing came up was because I was kind of triggered with the whole Drew situation. So when Drew had brought up your cousin being shot at your business, it made me think of my nephew who used to work for you. And then Candy once again steps in and says, you know, that's got nothing to do with me. Your nephew getting killed had nothing to do with me, had nothing to do with my businesses. So they're going back and forth, back and forth. Manetta feels like she has to get up and go figure out what the hell is going on. Manetta, sit down, sweetheart. You're not needed. So then it keeps on escalating. Drew gets involved. Involved. Drew being there completely messed up the whole entire situation. She was not even supposed to be a part of this conversation, but for whatever reason, Marlo invited her. So when the voices get too elevated and things get a little bit too out of hand, all the ladies come in and they step in in between Candy and Marlo. Now, Candy is very upset. When Candy gets emotional, she starts, you know, the, the verbato starts, her voice starts trembling. And, you know, Marlo was making fun of her, saying that, you know, she was starting to cry. There's no need to cry, Candy. And Candy's like, I'm only crying because I'm so mad that I can't, you know, choke the hell out of you right now. So they separate. Candy and her people go outside. Marlo and her people stay inside. The whole thing was a big bust. But the the issue here for me is is that for whatever reason Marlo is extremely envious of Candy. And so she is going to use whatever she can to attack her because you know every chance she gets ever since Marlo came on the scene every chance she gets she starts picking on Candy. And I guess this woman is just really jealous or envious of Candy. I don't know what it is. I don't know what issue Marlo has with Candy. Um, but it has to be more than just a whole nephew situation. So when Candy's outside with her group, she's telling them how right after Marlo brings to me this whole situation about her nephew getting killed, you know, she wants to work with me on some cameo stuff. You know, cameo used to be that app or whatever that situation was back during the pandemic when, you know, you can pay for a celebrity to leave a message like a video message for you or for anybody else that you want them to leave a message for. And so she was like, you know, right after she tells me about her, her, her nephew being killed, she wants to collab with me on this whole cameo stuff, like using candy to promote her own cameo. So, and then Drew says, you know, she had all these years to let you know that this bothered her, but now she's bringing it up now for some reason. Now to hear Marlo tell it, the reason why she's bringing it up now is because Drew triggered her because she kept on saying how she didn't know that she still had these unresolved feelings in her about her nephew. And this incident with Drew just brought it all out to the surface. So it wasn't like she didn't care all these years. It's just that she didn't know that these feelings were there right beneath the surface I don't know what's going on to me it seems like Marlo is jealous or envious of Candy and she constantly wants to nitpick at her and she constantly wants to paint her in a really bad light and it seems like Sheree Sonia and Courtney are kind of like in agreement with all of this. They're kind of like in agreement with Marlo treating the candy the way she's treating her. I don't think Candy deserves this kind of heat from Marlo at all um even Courtney was like approaching Candy outside and was like, oh, I'm just so, I'm so sorry about that, that, that this happened. And Candy was like, thank you, I guess, get away from me. So 
but really Courtney stands with Marlo and doesn't see her for candy so this whole thing I'm just confused on why Marlo is being the way that she is um, because Marlo always wanted to present herself as being the rich one you know like she has it like that she's got the friends in high places she's got access to a whole lot of money she's got this and she's got that and you know she's the creme de la creme I don't know why she's got it in for candy I have no idea I have no idea what's going on I'm very confused this season um I think that's all I have to say it was like really much of nothing we're just rehashing the same scenes over and over again talking about Marlo and Drew talking about why didn't Drew say this instead of that talking about the the, the shootings going on at Candy's businesses we're in episode six and we have not moved on from that these things happened okay your nephew was shot may he rest in peace what do you want Candy to do about it now? Drew, stop lying. Stop lying. Please stop saying stupid asinine things. People from the south side, the north side, the west side, and the east side of Chicago say the word shooting. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, subscribe to my channel. And I will definitely talk to you later. Bye.